Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video. This video, I'm gonna talk about my pro debut on the uh, pro circuit, MLF pro circuit. So after winning Angler of the Year in 2020 in the Toyota series out west and um, quitting my job, pretty much pulling out the mortgage, going on tour, uh, here we go, the first event at Okeechobee. Now, what you guys didn't hear was I almost didn't make it to Okeechobee. I was actually driving in uh, Louisiana and uh, the roads were pretty rough on the I-10. I was talking to my buddy Randy, uh, you know, he was calling and checking in on me about the drive. And as I was talking to him, I felt, I went over a bridge and I felt my truck kind of jerk. I look back in my rear view mirror and my boat was doing a figure eight, kind of like I was towing a balloon. Uh, it's going about 70 miles an hour. Boat became disconnected from the trailer hitch. So again, I don't know like how it came disconnected. Uh, the nut on the bottom hitch worked itself loose. I mean, the roads at on I-10, they fixed it since then, but in Louisiana, I remember it being, the roads out there being pretty bad. I remember thinking to myself that, man, these roads are like way worse than the I-5 in California. So anyway, made it to Alabama. The road just basically flattened out, went over a bridge that caused, uh, there was a little bump at the end of that bridge and my boat became disconnected. I don't know how it didn't crash. Basically, I just dragged my boat going 70 miles an hour. I let go of the brakes. Luckily, I didn't press on the brakes or anything like that. Um, let go of the gas and kind of just eased it over to the shoulder and I felt the little tap. I walked out and looked at my boat. I thought my event was over at that time. I, was, I said, there was no way I didn't get a bunch of damage on my boat and uh, got super lucky. So I was I was pretty much in shock. Um, it was raining outside or sprinkling, it was super wet. If you guys remember back in 2021, there was that uh, freeze down in Texas. I was driving through the Southern United States right before the storms were gonna hit. Um, anyway, I was in shock and I knew I needed a hitch, so I wasn't just gonna sit there and just cry about it. I got on the phone, luckily I had internet service, uh, found an advanced auto parts. I called them to make sure they had a hitch and I asked them, hey, do you guys deliver? They said, no, I remember being super bummed out about it. I said, man, what am I gonna do? And again, remember, I'm not thinking straight, okay? Um, you know, I got on my Uber app checking for rides and then it hit me. I was like, wait a minute, there's nothing wrong with my truck. So I went in the back, unhooked one cable. One of it broke. Uh, the other side, again, my boat was just connected by a cable. And again, thinking back on that, super fortunate. I didn't get hurt. And more importantly, somebody else didn't get hurt around me. And this was about 9.30 in the morning when it happened. So there was a lot of traffic flying by. Again, I'm glad that didn't happen next to another vehicle and I didn't end up killing somebody. So pretty fortunate there. Again, unhooked my uh, boat. Again, it was just laying there. Uh, again, I got pictures. I uh, got one picture I'll, I'll include in this video somehow. But I took off to Mass Auto Parts. They were 12 minutes away. I was hurrying up, trying to get there. I bought another hitch, attached it on, came back. Luckily, I do bring a floor jack with me, stuck it underneath the trailer, jacked it up, dropped it on the hitch, um, pretty much took off to the next stop, get a full walk around on a boat, and I could not believe I didn't have a single scratch on my boat. I don't even know how I managed to um, basically get my boat on the shoulder, disconnected from the boat, holding it on, by two cables and uh, managed to, to, to get over to the side safely. And um, yeah, with no damage. The only damage I had is actually um, at the front there is, uh, on my boat, there's a uh, pool that helps you get in and out of your boat from the front. And that tapped on my bumper on both sides. So I got a dent on both sides. Anyway, um, 
I hooked up the boat, just kind of started off slow, going pretty slow, making sure that, you know, um, nothing else was going to come apart. And I drove from Alabama all the way to Okeechobee with a big smile on my face. I knew I just got so lucky. But anyway, let's talk about the tournament. I go out there, again, first tournament, got the jitters. I found an area up in the North Shore that was loaded. I think um, on the second day of practice, and again, uh, going back, I practiced the first day, didn't, you know, had okay, an okay day. The second day, um, my motor broke down. So my trim actuator was going out. So that held me back like three hours in the morning, had to get that fixed. You only had two days of practice. So anyway, fixed it, ran all the way up north and had a short day of pra short and shorter day of practice in um, found an area that was absolutely loaded. It was like sea world back there. I mean, there were beds everywhere. I think I had probably about 20 something beds marked, a seven pounder, a few fives, tons of threes, and talking to everybody there, everybody's gonna say it's gonna take about 12 and a half pounds of cash to check. So I'm like, I got this in the bag. Um, cool. We go out there, launched out there, and, um, I started there with two other boats. Josh Bragg is one of the guys that later on became one of my good friends that we travel with, but he found those same fish. We still talk to the, to each other about those very same fish till today. I have never seen fish pull off like that before. And then people have told me that fish at Okeechobee have a tendency to do that. And again, we found it again the second day, we had a day off, third day conditions were identical, calm. There was no reason for those fish to pull off, but I got there, um, caught a 12 incher. I caught a 14 and a half incher tongue hook. It was bleeding pretty bad. I was so confident that I was gonna catch a limit that I threw that fish back. So that day sitting at, I had a late weigh in four o'clock at 2 p.m. I was sitting there with that same 12 incher. I mean, talk about a sinky feeling. Um, I was getting ready to go in there and just, man, feel super embarrassed about catching a 12 incher. Uh, I was 25 minutes away from launch and maybe 30, and I had an hour and a half left to fish. I mean, I was so desperate for a bite that I pulled out a spinning rod, tied on eight pound test line, and then tied on a little wacky rig Senko and decided to go out there and wacky rig. Hi, Kayla, shooting a video, want to get in it? So anyways, my daughter, she came in for the video. She wants in, but anyway, Threw a wacky rig Senko, ended up catching a three, and then just filled in my limit full of 12 inches. Anyway, the um, I weighed in, I think about eight pounds that day. But but uh, anyway, came back the next day, knew those fish were there, figured they pulled out. So I just kind of searched the area, caught another eight pound bag. I, I think I end up, ended up, uh, again, my worst finish to date was my pro debut. 135th place. That was super embarrassing. So anyway, I left Okeechobee. I'd done a ton of research. I knew that the West Coast guys really struggle at that fishery for some reason. So I left and um, I had two days to, to kill. So I went up to Harris Chain. There's a known tournament lake. So I went up to Harris Chain. I was gonna go try to learn that lake. Well, I, I was already out there. My flight is until another few days. Went up there, got there at about 9.45 in the morning. Uh, basically it was raining, waited in the truck until the rains passed. So ended up launching the boat at 10.30, about. Anyway, fished, caught a ton of fish. Um, a lost, first bite I got was about a five, six pounder, lost it on a chatter bait. And uh, anyway, end up catching a ton of fish. And I think I had like about 14 pounds that day, but there was another college tournament going on. So I decided to kind of compare my weight compared to uh, how those college kids did. 
And man, to my surprise, when I opened up the results, it was 32 pounds, 32 pounds, 29, 27, 27, 26. Those college kids smashed them and I only had 14 pounds. Anyway, now I'm excited. The next day I get a full day, I go out there, I fish, fish all day long. I catch about another 14 and a half pound bag. There was a high school tournament going on, so I figured I'd compare my weights to the high school kids. To my surprise, 26 pounds, 26 pounds, 23, 22. I, at that point, saw life flashing before my eyes. I thought I was gonna end up losing everything. I said, oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? So I am like, got beat up by Okeechobee and going up to Harris Chain, I would have got my teeth kicked in if I entered any tournaments. And here I am, I just quit my job, took a, a mortgage out on my house, basically planned for two years, just started up a business and I'm thinking, man, this might be the start of my demise. So I was pretty freaked out. Uh, anyway, fast forward to the next event, ended up finishing six at Smith and then six at Murray, kind of got into my groove. And then the rest is pretty much history from there. But uh, yeah, it was definitely a scary time. I look back and again, the pro debut thing, it just did not go how I pictured it. Uh, so I just want, kind of want to share you guys that story. Uh, looking back on it, kind of giggle about it, but I remember going through, the, through it at that time. Definitely a scary spot. And uh, yeah, sometimes things just don't go how you picture it. And it's just how you recover is all that matters. But uh, looking back, definitely a big learning curve. Uh, one of the things that in Florida, again, I made, I made a joke about this, which is absolutely true for those guys that don't or haven't fished Florida. Those fish in Florida don't care what you know about bass fishing. So remember that. So my approach for Florida now, when I go there, when I think they're over here, I better be fishing over there. Um, but yeah, ended up doing well in Florida earlier this year, finally. I think it was the uh, third or fourth time I competed there. Those fish down there are different. But uh, again, love fishing down there. I love shallow water fishing. Um, just wish I lived a little closer to spend a little bit more time. But we're gonna start off at Okeechobee this year in the open, so I'm excited to see if I can put together everything I've learned over the years to have a good start. But uh, anyway, kinda wanna share, share that story with you guys. And uh, let me know if you guys have any questions about all this. I'll catch you guys later on the next one. Peace.